I live and work in the city now, and with all the cement and noise and cars, the coming of spring seems to pass almost unnoticed. When I was growing up in Nebraska in the 1940s, it was always a contest at our house to see who could spot the first robin, and we all watched eagerly for the morning when Grandma's daffodils would burst into bloom in the kitchen window. To me, Easter always meant sewing a new Sunday dress and dyeing eggs until my fingers were stained like a rainbow. But the Easter I remember best was in 1947 when I was 12 years old. I met someone that spring who gave Easter a special meaning for me. This is the house we lived in then. Stop crowding me, Addie. Sorry. Don't do that mess at the table. It's disgusting. Well, I need more eggshells for Easter. Scramble eggs again. Mmm. Now I'll get Grandma to make a cake. Hey, go on. Get out of here, will you? You'll be late for school. Oh, it's Easter vacation. I don't have to go for a whole week. Oh. Now, I don't know what's so interesting in this rag of a paper. You can't wait till I'm finished. I'm looking to see if there's anything in it about the Easter Style Show contest. What's that? Oh, I've told you about it a million times, didn't I, Grandma? Uh, uh, uh. All the seventh grade girls are designing original fashion creations. We're having a contest to see who does the best. And then we're modeling it at the Women's Club Lunch next week. Oh, well, big news like that wouldn't be in the town paper. That'd probably be on the front page of the Omaha World Herald. Oh, very funny. Well, I'll be. What? Paper says Constance Gunderson's coming back here from New York. Says she attended her mother's funeral in Omaha, coming back here to sell the family home. <laughs> She'd never be able to unload that white elephant. One on Elm Must Street. be 20 rooms in the, the joint. One? Nobody can afford to heat it in the winter. Who's Constance Gunderson anyway? What's she do in New York? Say, what are you, the district attorney? Well, who is she? She's Constance Payne, the actress. That's her stage name. <laughs> Guess she didn't like Gunderson for acting. I never saw in any movies, did I? <laughs> never been in any. Poor Sue. Well, she's on the stage. She does those Broadway things. You mean real life theater stuff? Wait a minute, I'll of course Sue to hear this. Yeah, probably Shakespeare and all that. I don't know why anybody wants to sit through that after a hard day's work. Kid, wait to hear what I just heard. What? Constance Payne, the Broadway actor. She's coming to Clear River. Who? Did you have breakfast, Clara Sue? Yeah, Constance but I could stand Payne. some oatmeal, I guess. Oh, I so. Who's Constance Payne? I never heard of her. That's what I'm trying to find out. Dad, you ever know her? Yeah, she was a couple years behind me in school. What was she like? I'm oh, always putting on airs. Think she has her name up in lights? Is she a real big star? I guess so. Folks always said she was doing real good. Here you are, Mr. Carlos. So sit over here. What's she look like? Have you seen her since she got famous? No, well, she was pretty, I guess. Dark haired. Came back here about ten years ago for her father's funeral. Never stayed around long enough to talk to anybody. Did you ever go out with her? <laughs> you kidding? She was too fancy for me. 
Wow. I wish we could go to New York and see her. Listen, we can see her right here. I mean in a play. Yeah, but at least we can get her autograph. We'll just go over there. No, I don't want you going over there and pestering her. Oh, James, I can't think it'll hurt anything. Mother, I don't want her hanging around some actress. Dad, all we want is her autograph. We're not going to move in with her. Yeah, well, you stay away from there. Folks were nothing but rich trash. Now, James. Well, Mother, look, they never did a day's work in their lives. Well, you can't blame a child for what her folks did. She was always a nice girl in school. You used to say so yourself. Hardly when did she her. get here? According to this, she's here now. Now? Parsons paying actress returns to the room. I don't know if I'm ever going to get the details right on this dress. Let's see it. Mm. No, I told you it's a secret design until the show. All right, who cares? Yeah. yeah. This is so complicated. Did you see this new this new design in here? Yeah. You know, this really is the most elaborate thing I've ever designed. Mm. For someone who hates to sew. Sure, I'm making a big deal out of this. Well, I wouldn't even be in the dumb style show if it wasn't a home ec assignment. But if I have to do it, I'm going to be creative. And believe me, this is creative. Come on, let me see what you're doing. You've no. seen all of ours. No, actually, let, let me see it. it. Let me And they'll kill me. Get away from me, then. True. Oh, look what you did to my jerk. I'm a broke. <laughs> Immature. Idiot. But it better be some fancy dress when we see it. Now, come on. We're supposed to be discussing important stuff. Who are we going to get to present the awards at the style show? Why can't we have Miss Thompson do it? She did it last year. Besides, we can't keep having our teacher do everything. There must be someone else in this town. Think! Fashion magazines are so stupid. Does your mother really read this junk? No, I got some of Mrs. Hollis at the cleaners. I wouldn't be caught dead in a dog fight in these clothes. Mm -hmm. Gad, where did you get that? I borrowed it from my mother. Did your mother let you wear nail polish? Only at night. I have to take it off before I go out in the morning. That's ridiculous. Well, when we're old enough to wear nail polish, I'm going to know how to do it, and you're not. <sighs> I want to try it when you're done. <sighs> what to wear to a Broadway opening night? We've got to think of somebody to present the awards. Constance Payne. Eddie, we were going to keep that a secret. I know, but I just got this terrific brainstorm. She's the perfect person to present the awards. What secret? Constance who? Constance Payne is a fantastic Broadway actress. But she's here in Clear River to sell her house. She used to live here. The old Gunderson house, the one on Elm Street, and she's a star, and we were going to go see her anyway. To get her autograph, and she would be fabulous. And you weren't going to tell us. Well, we would have told you later. Thanks a lot. Mm. What does she look like? I don't know exactly, but she has to be fabulous. How do you know? Leading ladies have to be glamorous. Okay, it's settled. When I go to get her autograph, I ask her to be our celebrity guest. Who elected you? We'll all go. Oh, and excuse me, but I'm sure she doesn't want a lot of strange people descending on her house unannounced. Perhaps I should go alone. Listen, kiddo, it was my idea, too, to get her autograph. Yeah, it's a free country. Anyone can go to her house if they want. Oh, uh, right, all right, but when it comes to the moment of truth, I'll do the asking. Oh, no, all my toes are stuck to the car. <laughs> in the afternoon. I'm telling you, actresses sleep late. My gosh, if she isn't up now, she'll never be. I'm so nervous, I wonder what to say to her. Well, we can talk about New York and art and acting and all kinds of things. Who knows about any of that stuff? Well, if you're so tongue-tied, I'll do the talking. You always do the talking. Well, we can't all just stand there like dummies. Somebody has to say something. What if she doesn't even want to see us? Oh, come on, she'll be glad to see us. We're fans, aren't we? How can we be fans? We've never seen her act. In fact, I never even heard of her until last night. Me neither, but I'm dying to get her autograph. I don't have any real stars in my book. I do. I've got Roy Rogers from the time I was in the parade in Omaha. We know, we know. We've heard about you and Roy Rogers a hundred times. Honestly, you and your cowboys. Well, who have you got that's his name? The only one here has a truly historic person's autograph. Someone who will be a part of history books someday. Margaret Truman. Oh, oh, you got that in the mail. Oh, anybody can get one in the mail, Terry. An autograph doesn't count unless you get it from the actual person in the flesh. Well, I'd rather have Margaret Truman in the mail than Roy Rogers in the flesh. You would. Well, Constance Payne will be my best autograph if I get it. My father said when they were in school, she was always flirting with him. But he never went out with her because she wasn't his type. Well, my father knew her very well. I think she was mad for him. They used to date a lot, you know. I bet she can't wait to see him again. So she want to come over for dinner or something. Dinner at your house? Yes, I suppose I really should invite her some Saturday night. There it is. 
Well, come on, you guys, let's go. Oh, she's not even here. Will you relax? Well, she's not going to say yes to the style show anyway. It's stupid ass. Don't be such a pessimist. I mean, Adelaide. These are for you. To welcome you to Clear River. I mean, to welcome you back. Well, thank you, Adelaide. You can call me Addie. Oh, and this is Cora Sue Carter Hello. and Linda Cole Hi. and Terry Sloan. Girls. We came to get your... We came to welcome you back to Clear River. You already said that. All right. Well, it was nice of you to welcome me. I appreciate it. And the flowers are lovely. My grandmother grows them. She's got all kinds of them. Well, you be sure and thank her for me, will you? I'm sorry I don't have more time to chat. Can we have your autograph? Yeah, but you brought our boots. Oh, maybe some other time. It'll only take a second. Yeah, you don't have to write a lot of stuff. Just sign your name. Does anybody have a pen? Gosh, I didn't bring one. Me neither. Eddie, you got one? I can't think of everything. I brought the flowers. Uh, can we borrow a pen? I guess I must have one inside somewhere. Excuse me. I'm afraid the house is in a bit of a mess. I'm sorting things out, trying to get everything settled before I go back to New York. Don't you travel a lot in tours and stuff? Oh, I get to work outside of New York sometimes. Ah, oh, here's a pen. Now, let's see, your name is... Terry, T-E-R-R-Y. My name's Cora Sue. That's two words. Cora Sue? My name's Linda. Linda. Now, let's see, your name is Adelaide. Oh, uh, make it to Addie. I hate Adelaide. Oh, I always hated my last name, Gunderson. Didn't seem right for the theater somehow, so I changed it. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't want to sign my paintings, Adelaide. It'll look dumb. You an artist? Well, I'm gonna be someday. As soon as I can go to Paris and New York and study and stuff. New York? Oh, yeah, I can't wait. I'm going the minute I get out of college. Got a scrapbook about New York and a map and everything. Oh, she's always talking about having her paintings in the Museum of Metropolitan Art. It's the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Dodo. Who cares? I hope it'll be a success like you. Then there'll be two famous people from Clear River. Wow, it must be neat to live in the city with penthouses and cocktail parties and stuff. Do you live near the Empire State Building? Uh, well, not too far from it. Do you ever have to be in Shakespeare? Oh, yes. Caddy, don't see how you ever know what they're talking about. Do actors <laughs> make a lot of money? Leading ladies get paid very well, yes. Real actors don't act for the money, Terry. They do it for the love of the theater. It's a way of life. Linda wants to know if you date any movie stars. I do not. I do so. Do you? I am not the sort to kiss and tell. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be in town for a while? No. I guess you have to start on a new play or something. Rehearsals and all that. I bet you have a lot of wigs and costume fittings and stuff. What's your new play about? Actresses don't discuss their roles before rehearsal. It's supposed to be a secret, right? Something like that, yes. Think you'll be in town next week? It's hard to say. Well, we're having a style show contest at the women's club luncheon next week, and 
We always have a celebrity guest to give out the awards, and we wondered if you'd do it. It would really make the whole thing so high class. Yeah, we never had a real celebrity before. It would mean so much to us. I bet the women's club would be thrilled if you came. You don't even have to sit for your lunch. You can just come for the show. Yeah, I'm very flattered, but I really can't. I told you so. You and your stupid ideas. Oh, clam up, will you? I'm sorry, but it's impossible. And that's okay. Don't forget to invite Miss Payne to dinner, Addie. Uh, her father's your old friend, James Mills. James Mills? I don't think I remember. Didn't you used to go out with him? She said you did. It was a long time ago. Don't you remember? Oh, James Mills. Of course I remember him. He was a handsome devil. You be sure and say I said hello. Addie wanted you to come to dinner. She said you'd want to. I suppose you're too busy, though. Uh, not at all. Maybe sometime soon. Good. Her dad would just love to see you again. It was his idea to invite you. All right, you just let me know when. Okay. She said Saturday night. Saturday? Aren't you going to tell her what time? Read it at 6. Come on, you guys, let's go by. Say Thank you. It was so neat. Oh, thank you for the nice autograph, Miss Payne. Thank you. It was so fabulous. I never met a real star before. I told you not to go over there. Dad, she was great. She was wearing this fabulous Japanese kimono, black with great big red flowers, and these fantastic embroidered slippers and bright red nail polish. Uh, sounds like the dragon lady to me. The way she talks is so elegant. Most actors talk phony. Oh, no, she studied in England. She probably picked up an accent. You should hear what she said about you, Dad. What? Oh, never mind. You can tell me. Well, I said, do you remember James Mills? And she said, oh, he was a handsome devil. Oh, James. How would she remember me? She was positively exotic and dramatic. And nice, too. You really should see her. Daddy, watch the train. Sorry. So I asked her to be the celebrity guest at our style show. But huh? she can't. She has to go back to New York. She's doing a new play on Broadway. I told you not to pester. Not good manners. Bother people that way. She didn't mind. Besides. I made up for it by inviting her to dinner. You what? Well, I had to. She said she'd just love to see you again, and I had to be polite. You just said to have good manners. There's no business inviting her without asking at home. Well, it's my home, too. Now, Eddie, that was sassy. You should have asked first. You can't have her to dinner. Now, James, it'll be all right. Can we have something special? Oh, we sure will. I think it was a nice idea inviting her. She's probably lonely in that big old house. Mother, she doesn't want to come to dinner over here. The heck she doesn't. She's coming Saturday night. Well, you had no business inviting her. Now, look, march yourself right back over there and tell her you made a mistake. Tell her you forgot to ask your grandmother first. I can't do that. Why not? Well, she practically invited herself. And then I told her that you'd just love to see her again. I hardly know the fool woman. Shh. Now, Addie, that's a pity. You mustn't do those things. Well, I guess Dad can always go over there himself and tell her that he doesn't want to see her and that she can't come to dinner. Right. One of these days, I'm going to lock you up. What should we have? We'll have. I can't get the spot off. Well, she's not going to look at it with a magnifying glass. What time is it? Oh, uh, almost quarter past. Fifteen minutes late. Probably not coming. She'll be here. Put a note under her door this afternoon to remind her. Besides, she's too high class to just not show up. High class, my... James. What? There she is. Almost twenty minutes late. Hi. Good evening, Addie. I'm sorry I'm late. I tried to call you, but you don't have a telephone. Come in. I'm afraid I won't be able to stay very long. I'm expecting a call from New York. Uh, this is my grandmother, Sarah Mills. 
Constance. Nice to see you again. And you remember my dad, James Mills? Of course, I remember you both. Yeah, well, uh, Constance, it's been a long time. It was nice of you to invite me to dinner, James. Well, I... It's nice you wanted to come over. Dinner's ready, so I think we should sit down before it all gets cold. Miss Payne, you sit here. No, I don't mind waiting a bit on dinner if you want to serve cocktails first. Oh, we never serve cocktails. Miss Payne? Oh, Addie, call me Constance. Well, <clears throat> I understand you're here to uh, sell a house. Yes, it's a nuisance, but these things have to be done. Gonna have a hard time finding the buyer. It's so big. Yeah, I hope it won't take too long. Oh, pretty busy in New York, are you? She's doing a new play on Broadway. Well, I hope to be starting something soon. My goodness, Constance. Folks here never get much chance to hear about Broadway. I hope you're gonna tell us all about your work. My, this looks good. I think you became a famous star. I remember when you were just a little thing, reciting at the Sunday school pageants and all. Addie, pass the salt. Were you in those two? So was I when I was little. I even wanted to be an actress then. You did? Yeah, once, before I decided to be an artist. Uh, Addie, pass the pepper. I'll probably study in Paris, and when I'm famous, I'll live in New York. Oh, that's the place to be all right if you're famous. We always knew you had talent. You were always winning those high school declamatory contests. They were so dreadful, weren't they? None of us were any good. Hmm. Guess Clear River must seem like a one-horse town to you now after the big city. Oh, no, I, I like it here very much. Uh, would you have some celery, Constance? Um, anything? No, thank you. I, I wonder if you might have some wine, just a little touch to go with the roast beef. Oh. I'm afraid there isn't anything in the way of spirits in our house. We never partake. Well, that's quite all right. It's just that I'm so used to having wine with my meals. Uh, since the war, the French wines are coming back, and they're really very distinctive, uh, much better than the uh, domestic. Do you ever have champagne? Oh, quite often. But you have it on opening nights. Oh, yes. Boy, I wish we could see you on the stage. Or you could at least do our style show. Now, don't go bothering her with that. Couldn't you do it for old time's sake? I mean, you've never given a performance in Clear River or anything. People like to see you. She doesn't want to be in some silly thing like that. I don't know where she gets these crazy ideas, thinking up all this nonsense. Going to Paris and New York and going to be an artist. Well, that's what we're going to do. Yeah? You better think about settling down somewhere and making a home for yourself instead of doing so much daydreaming. Daydreaming's not so bad. At least you have something to look forward to. You look forward to getting a decent job and making a living and trying to raise a family. It's about all there is. I guess that just isn't enough for some people. It's not for me. You'll find out when you grow up. You can't have everything you want. It doesn't hurt to try for it. When is this style show of yours, Eddie? Next Wednesday. Maybe I can make it. You mean it? I think I can arrange it. Great. My goodness, Constance, that's awful nice. I'm sure all the girls will be so excited. What do I tell Terry? They'll run you ragged if you let them. I'm sure they won't. Grandma, the rolls! My goodness, they're still in the oven. Sorry to hear about your mother. Thank you. Well, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Yes, it has. More years than I'd like to think about. I remember we used to tease you. We used to call you, uh... Countess Constance, because you seem so stuck up. Yes, I remember. Well, I guess you showed everybody. You're the only one of us who made a big success. Well, they got a little burned, but I guess they'll be okay. I'm sorry, Annie, but I have to go. But you haven't finished your dinner yet. I know, but this call is very important. Sorry you have to leave. 
But there's dessert, too. Grandma's best apple pie. Constance, you're not leaving so soon. I'm afraid so. With this call and the time difference, thank you so much, oh, Mrs. Mrs. Bells. All right, you have to rush off. You'll uh, come again sometime. Of course. Good night, Jane. Good night. Don't forget about the style show. I wouldn't miss it. Boy, she couldn't wait to get out of here, could she? She did seem kind of upset. Yeah. She forgot her gloves. Miss Payne? Constance! She's gone already. Next, Miss Next, Miss Carsu Carter in her original creation, Pink Parfait. <laughs> Pink Parfait, a lovely number to wear to a Hollywood premiere at Brahman's Chinese Theater. Or for eating caviar and champagne at the Eiffel Tower. Yards and yards of fluffy ruffles in strawberry pink provide just the right feminine touch for today's young lady, Pink Parfait. Thank you very much, Corsi. Haven't the young ladies done a lovely job of writing their narration, too? Our next creation is from Miss Linda Cole. Get up, Linda, get out there. Come on, come on. Get you. Get it out. Note the oh-so-tidy look of the crisp white piquet trim. So springy. Just the dress for a stroll down Fifth Avenue, or for trying on hats in Paris, or perhaps even to wear to the Kentucky Derby flat on the record company. That wasn't so bad. That wasn't so bad. I don't even want to talk about it. Constance isn't here yet. What are we going to do if she doesn't show? She'll be here. Just don't panic. What if she's in here in time to give out the awards? You and your Big idea. Oh, zip your lips, Sloan. Shut up, you guys. You can hear us out <laughs> Tulip time. Note the detail of applique tulips at the hem. A lovely dress for a picnic on the Riviera, or a concert at Carnegie Hall, or perhaps for dancing at the Mardi Gras. A lovely springtime dress, tulip time. Next is Miss Terry Sloan. Terry, get out there. You're next. That the dress is so woman. sickening. I know. Her mother what? loves it, though. Only her mother can. Green goddess. Note the classical Greek lines in the grape of the luxurious fabric. Ah, uh, the lovely way the dress moves on a graceful dancer's form. A perfect frock for sitting in the royal box at the opera, or for waltzing in the Vienna woods, or perhaps for a New York penthouse cocktail party. <laughs> Green Goddess by Miss Terry Sloan. Thank you, Terry. Eddie, you're next. All right, I'm going. Our last Miss Pants still isn't here yet. <clears throat> Don't worry. It's by Miss Adelaide Mills. Her dress is called Rick Rack Rhapsody. <laughs> Rick Rack Rhapsody, the perfect dress for driving in your European sports car, or perhaps for lunching in the blue room at the White House, or signing autographs at Hollywood and Vine. Note. 
the unusual detailing in the application of Rick Red. <laughs> on the cuffs, on the collar, on the bodice, <laughs> on the skirt, on the belt, on the hem, on the purse, on the hat, <laughs> on the socks, on the gloves, on the pigtails. <laughs> Excuse me, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go right ahead. Indeed, a veritable Rick Rack Rhapsody. Thank you, Adelaide. Thank you. Now, if all the young ladies will come out again, and stand together here. The judges will finish making their decisions. I'm sure they'll have a very difficult choice to make among all the lovely creations. Thank you. Now, without further ado, we will get on with awarding our prizes. It is my very great pleasure to announce that our celebrity prize presenter is one of Clear River's most distinguished ex-citizens, whom we're also very proud to have back in our fair city again. Let's all give a warm welcome to our very own Broadway star, Miss Constance Payne. the wings, not up the steps. <laughs> oh, I forgot my glasses. Can I help you? No, 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 it's all right. I, uh, I know how excited you all are. Louder, please. I know how excited you all are to hear the winners. I think she's drunk. I'm sorry, it won't be a minute. Can't, can't I help you read it? I know no, 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 it's how all hard right. it is to read. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not feeling very well. Of course I'm. Excuse me. Now, it's my great pleasure to announce that the first prize for the most eastery creation is won by Miss Mary Beth Walsh. Mary Beth, you get this lovely prize. Oh, you look charming. Ladies, you notice the, the jumper and the jacket. Oh, and look, she's wearing a purse that matches the She might take these things back to Miss Payne, Addie. I know that you're friends. She might be a little embarrassed to see me. Okay. I hope you're not too upset, Addie. It's a shame things went so badly this afternoon. It's all my fault. I never should have asked her to do it. The whole style show is ruined. Now, don't go blaming yourself. You couldn't know Constance do a thing like that. Well, of course not, Addie. Inviting her was a good idea. What happened wasn't your fault at all. I have to be getting back to the restaurant. Thanks for taking care of those things for me, Eddie. You're welcome. Bye, Rosa. Sarah. Bye, Eddie. Bye. Now, 
before you start worrying. Come on. Help me get supper. Okay. You can set the table. All right. Evening. James. Well, look what I found. Growing out by the pond where I was working today. Pussy willows. Spots. There are any left. Spring was so early this year. Thanks, Dad. Well, don't get all head up over them. I heard about Constance Payne. Stopped by the post office on my way home from work, and old Orville Lyle told me. His wife was at the show, so I guess it's all over town by now. Oh, blabbermouth. Now, Addie. Well, she is. Why does she have to go and spread it all over town? Well, hard to keep a thing like that secret. People are bound to talk. Well, it doesn't surprise me one bit. But what I'd expect from old Constance. <laughs> You shouldn't say those things. Oh, Mother, her dad was a boozer and she takes after him. Remember how she was looking for a drink over here the other night? Well, lots of people take a drink at dinner without going overboard about it. She don't know how to handle it. I feel kind of sorry for her. Me too. <laughs> she must have been some sight lurching around. Gee, <laughs> there wasn't anything funny about it. I should say not. I bet she feels terrible about what she did. I bet she's done the same thing a dozen times before. People get to drinking and they don't care what anybody else thinks. And feeling sorry for them only makes them worse. How do you know? Uh, I've seen plenty of them. Old George Bartle used to drink on the job. He'd go off on a toot and then come whining around, saying he was sorry and they'd give him a second chance and a couple of days later he'd be off again. People like that never change. Anybody can change if they get the chance. Poor old George didn't have a friend in the world. Well, what do you expect for people to behave like that? It's too bad Constance doesn't have somebody to help her out. Well, Constance Payne's name is absolutely nothing but dirt from now on. My mother says she should be ridden out of town on a rail. Oh, what does your mother know anyway? She's never had the problems of a great dramatic actress. Just because she's an actress is no reason to get drunk. Well, I felt sorry for her. Me too. It was so embarrassing. I did too. My grandmother says she probably needs help. Yeah, she needed help getting out the door. Sloan, you have absolutely no human compassion. Well, she's just an old lush. Great artists have problems other people can't understand. Remember when Van Gogh cut off his own ear? Yuck! If you ever get to be a prima ballerina, you'll probably be a dope fiend or a split personality or something. Huh. Yeah, you'll probably be dancing around in a padded cell. Yeah, and a green goddess straight jacket. Oh, help! I can't stand your green pots of gum! Yucks! Bobby, you guys are disgusting! All right, stop it. Listen, come here. Come here. I have this great idea for a project for all of us. I think we should get Constance Paint to give us dramatic lessons. Dramatic lessons? You're out of your mind. What do we need with dramatic lessons? Listen, didn't we agree on our New Year's resolutions we were going to do all kinds of self-improvement stuff, huh? Yeah. Yeah. And now it's almost Easter, and what have we done? Not one single solitary project. I take dancing lessons every week. We know, we know, but you've been doing that for years. So that's not an improvement for this year. Well, I don't see how dramatic lessons are going to improve me. I don't want to be an actress. Terry, great dancers are supposed to be dramatic on the stage. It would probably help you a lot later in your ballet career. Yeah, I bet it's expensive, though. Now we can collect pop bottles and stuff. I don't think it'll cost more than 50 cents each. I think that's what we should offer. That's a lot. But we'll only take a few lessons because she won't be here that long. I don't know. Oh, come on. Everybody give me 50 cents by tomorrow morning and I'll go and see her after lunch. 50 cents? Yeah, 50 cents. Is it cents. packed? Come on. Faithful friends through thick and thin. If we lose or if we win, signed in blood and sealed with spit, our loyalty will never quit. Crush your heart and hope to die. Stick a needle in your eye. Vow to keep the secret code or turn into an ugly tongue. Faithful friends thick and thin. Come on in. Addie, uh, I wasn't feeling very well yesterday and... I know. I mean, it's okay. It's just a dumb style show. Well, 
Thank you for not being angry. Uh, I just stopped by. I had something I wanted to ask you. Well, sit down. What is it? Well, it's more like I have this business proposition. See, Cora, Sue, and Linda, and Terry, and I have this pact about self-improvement. Only there isn't a whole lot you can do for self-improvement in Clear River. That is, there aren't many places you can take lessons and stuff like that. I see. Well, we had this great idea that as long as you're going to be here anyway, maybe we could take dramatic lessons from you. We thought it'd be great to have some really professional instruction. That is, if you take us on as pupils. Oh. I mean, we pay for it and everything. Oh, Addie, that's impossible. Why not, please? I'm not the kind of teacher you ought to have. We think you'd be great. Now, I'm afraid not. Besides, I have to get back to work. Boy, I wish I was going with you. Sometimes I hate it here. You don't know how lucky you are to live in Clear River. New York can be a terrible place. Yeah, but I bet I'd love it. You probably would. Maybe I'll get to go there someday. <laughs> not if my dad has anything to say about it. He thinks I should stay here and get married to be a school teacher or something. He never wants me to do anything exciting. <laughs> well, yeah, parents are like that. They worry about you. They want you to be safe. My parents were the same way. They didn't want me to go on the stage. That would have been awful. Think what you would have missed. Couldn't have been a famous actress if you'd stayed here. <laughs> well, there are other things in life. That's what my dad always says. Every time I talk about being an artist or going to Paris or New York, he acts like it's a trip to the moon or something. He just wants you to be happy. Staying here would make me happy in a million years. I mean, I like it. But I just don't want to sit around and do nothing for the rest of my life. I want to see what's going on in the world. I want to visit every country and eat every kind of food, see every museum read every book, do something that's never been done before. I don't want to be like everybody else. Well, I guess I do owe you something for yesterday. If you really want me to give you lessons, I will. You mean it? Sure. Can we start right away, today? I guess so. Great. We'll be <laughs> about four, OK? Fine. Do you wear anything special? No, no, what you have on is, you know, perfect. <laughs> oh, wait, I forgot. Here, we put up $2 for the first lesson. Oh, I know Addie, very that's... much, but you can teach us all at once in a group. Addie. I want it to be strictly professional. Bye-bye, see you at four. <laughs> first. Now, let's see. Um, well, imagine that there's a big spring dance and the girls are going to invite the boys. Now, Addie, you're going to invite your boyfriend and you're going to ask Cora Sue to double date with her boyfriend. Aren't we going to do anything from a play? I wanted to do a death scene. That's the best idea you've had all day. <laughs> this is called improvisation. Sounds like let's pretend. Yeah, that's what little kids do. Not quite. You'll see the difference. Now, Cora Sue, I want you to resist her suggestion, and Addie, you convince her. Okay, but it doesn't sound very dramatic. Okay, you're going to look at We'll see. <laughs> okay, Addie. How do I start? Well, you talk to Cora Sue every day, don't you? It's the same thing. Okay. Hi, heard about the big spring dance next week? Yeah, sounds neat. Uh, I'm inviting Billy Wilde. You want a double date? You and David Dokes? No, thanks. Well, how come? I just don't want to, that's all. Well, why not? I just don't. You have to have a reason. Says who? Well, we always do everything together. Why wouldn't we want to go to the dance together? Well, maybe I've made other plans. What other plans? Never mind. What is this? We have a pact not to keep secrets from each other, remember? This is different. Why is it different? You'll find out. This is just dumb. Why can't you tell me? Well, I just don't want to. Constance, this is just dumb. You said to talk to each other like we always do, and she'd never do that. Are you sure? Yes. Well, why don't you keep trying, find out what's going on? <sighs> okay. I'm gonna be stubborn about it. Once and for all, what's going on? I'm not <laughs> telling. Fine, you can just forget about being my best friend. Fine. 
This is just stupid. How are we supposed to do this thing if you don't cooperate? Well, I am cooperating. She told me to pretend I'd already invited your boyfriend myself, and I didn't want you to find out about it. That's why I wouldn't go, and I wouldn't tell why. Very funny. <laughs> Now, did that argument seem real to you? Yeah. yeah. Why do you think it seemed real? Because she was really keeping a secret from me and it made me mad. Right. You weren't just doing, let's pretend. Um, you were really arguing, but you were doing it in pretend circumstances. Understand? I guess so. Well, you don't act something. You do something real in imaginary circumstances. Yeah, I get it. That's neat. I never knew that. Me neither. Can we do another one? All right, Linda, you and Terry now. Now, let's see. Linda, we'll imagine that you have a crush on a boy that you and Terry both know. It's Eddie Miller. It is not. It's so. Well, you describe how much you like him, and, uh, Terry, you don't agree. I'm All telling right? you, it's Eddie Miller. Well, if you, you know, it helps you to think of somebody real, do so. Okay, let's start. Uh, hey, I just met this really neat boy. Who? Joe Smith. Joe Smith, never heard of him. Oh, yeah, you know, the new boy. Oh, yeah, I think he's stupid. Oh, he is not. I think he's neat. Well, he's ugly. Ugly? He's better looking than your grand passion, Jimmy Walsh. He is not. Jimmy Walsh is really cute. Well, so is Joe Smith, and he's a sharp dresser, too. Yeah, probably wears sneakers with a suit. He does not. <laughs> Why don't you like Eddie Miller anymore? Didn't Whoa. say that. Well, you can't like two boys at once. Why not? <laughs> that is being fickle. Well, you're just joke because I have two boys interested in me at once, and you don't. Are you crazy? Joe Smith isn't even a real person. <laughs> then why are you arguing about him? This is just ridiculous. <laughs> no, that was very good, both of you. <laughs> you see, you got so involved that Joe Smith seemed real enough to argue over. I didn't know acting was so easy. Well, it's not quite that simple. <laughs> yeah, but we were just making up our own lines, so it seemed real. What do you do when you have to read someone else's lines? Yeah, like Shakespeare. That's so hard. Well, it's the same thing, really. What do you mean? Well, you were trying to tell Terry, you know, how much you liked Joe Smith, that he was neat and cute and a sharp dresser and how handsome he was. Um, for instance, Cleopatra says that Antony's face was as the heavens, and therein stuck a sun and moon, which kept their course and lighted the little O, the earth. His legs bestrid the ocean. His reared arm crested the world. His voice was propited as all the tune it spheres, and that to friends. But when he meant to quail and shake the orb, he was as rattling thunder. For his bounty, there was no winter in it. And autumn t'was that grew the more by reaping. His delights were dolphin-like. They showed his back above the element they lived in. In his livery walked crowns and crownets. Realms and islands were as plates dropped from his pocket. Think you there was or might be such a man as this I dreamed of. If there was or ever were one such, it's past the size of dreaming. She overslept, or maybe she had to leave. Oh, come on, she'd leave us a note or something. Maybe we should just go in. After all, she's expecting us. Well, you can go and see if she's there. Okay. Hi. What are you doing here? It's time for our lesson. Oh, go on home. 
haven't got anything to teach. She's drunk as a skunk. Oh, shut up. Are you all right? Get out! Come on, Eddie, she's drunk. Let's get out of here. Oh, go on. Or something. I don't need any coffee. I need another drink. You shouldn't drink. It's not good for you. Eddie! Let go! Let Carson, go! Sit! You can't drink! Take the damn thing! Stupid little brat! You shouldn't be nosing around here anyway! We came for a lesson. You told us to come at three. I could give lessons for a hundred years. It wouldn't make any difference. But you said we were doing good. Good is pathetic. Not an ounce of talent. Couldn't get a job sweeping the street. Get out of here! Ronnie, little brat. I'd rather be that than a drunk. Addie! I don't want to hear talk like that. Even though you got a right to be mad, don't go saying mean things. I was just trying to help her and she blew her top. It was awful. I guess she just can't help herself. She was so nice to us yesterday when we had our first lesson. Today she was like a different person. I think she's crazy. You no. Know, drinking can make people crazy. Well, then why do they do it? I guess they got something they just can't face up to and liquor helps them forget for a while. I can't believe she was so mean. Well, don't let such a thing hurt your feelings. You just remember Constance must be hurting a lot worse than you to go and behave like that. I think Dad was right. She just trash. Now, I don't want to go here and talk like that. Your dad's pretty smart, but he gets funny ideas sometimes. Don't show much sympathy for weakness. He can't understand people that don't tread the straight and narrow just like him. Well, nobody should behave like her. It ain't right to go judging other people's lives. That's the Lord's work, not ours. Got to learn to be a little forgiven. I would never go near her again. Well, maybe you ought not to. Be too bad if Constance didn't have no friends at all. Well, you said before she needed a friend, and I was. And look where it got me. Some friend. I uh, know. Sometimes being friends is hard work. But a true friend don't give up on somebody. When things go wrong, they try to help out. Dad says it doesn't do any good. People like her never change anyway. I think anybody can change. Well, look at me. I was in my 60s when your grandpa died, and I came to live with you and your dad and started raising a family all over again. It's a big change for me, but I did it. Worked out fine. Yeah, but you weren't living a bad life. You're living a bad life, all the more reason you might want to start over fresh. Like things coming up again in the spring. That's really what Easter's all about. The promise of a new life. You could say that Jesus was born again at Easter. The earth comes alive again after the dead of winter. Springs like the Lord's trying to show us there's always hope. There's always a chance of a new life. You see? Yeah, I guess so. Don't you brood about it. Now, you beat this 50 more strokes. Take your mind off your troubles.
Constance would ever do that? Start over? New life? I don't know. Kind of hard when you're all alone. Cake and lemonade. So I get some too. Yeah, I thought there was a catch to the deal. Well, it's only fair I don't make it. Uh, well, I paid for it. That's your job, to pay for stuff. You're telling me. You're sitting on that thing eight hours a day on the track. I like it. Don't try it eight hours a day and you won't like it so much. Come on, I've only got a few minutes. I'm busy as the devil. How do you know how busy the devil is? I know him personally. Yeah, what does he look like? About uh, 12 years old, uh, pigtails, oh, glasses. Very funny. <laughs> Your teeth are going to fall out one of these days, the way you eat sweets. Mm. I think Constance is one of those alcoholics. What? You know when they have to go to a sanitarium and get dried out and stuff like that? Nah, I don't think she's that bad off. Looks like she goes on a binge once in a while, can't handle it. She sure did yesterday. I guess she takes after her old man. All right. He used to blow his stack when he was hitting the bottle. I remember once when Constance was about your age. Her mother had a lot of ladies in from Omaha, and Constance was playing the piano for him. Our old Jesse came downstairs all boozed up. He walked in the living room right in his BVDs, and he told them all to shut up because he was trying to take a nap. <laughs> then he took out his gun. He had this $500 hunting rifle. All gold inlaid and carved, and he shot up every teacup in the room. Yeah. <laughs> and said the old biddy screamed like mad and ducked behind the sofas and thought they were all going to get killed. <laughs> well, nobody got hurt, but I bet they were picking pellets out of the woodwork for months. Wonder what Constance did. I'll bet she quit playing the piano real quick. Bet she cried. Yeah. I suppose so. She must have had a hard time of it. I feel kind of sorry for her. Hey, listen, Dad, wouldn't it be great if we could invite her to stay at our house for a few days until she feels better? Now, don't start that. But it would cheer her up to be around other people. Forget it. She could have your room and you could sleep on the sofa. What? Just for a few days. No. Let's ask her, please. We can't have her at our house. What would people think? Who cares what other people think, couldn't we? No. Just for a few days. Now, don't harp on me. I think we should do something to help her. Oh, go on, go on. Get out of here. I got work. Could we at least stop by and see if Constance is okay? No. Does she look like she might be sick? I don't want you going over there. We can stop by after you finish work. We? Oh, I'll just go in and see if she's no, okay. No, I'm not going over there, and neither are you. I don't want you to have anything more to do with her. But yeah, we'll just stop by here for a minute. Let's see if she's okay. I don't want you going in and staying.
found it if you needed anything. Addie, I'm sorry about yesterday. That's okay. No, it isn't. It, it was a terrible thing to do to you. I hope you know I didn't mean all those dreadful things I said. I was pretty sure you didn't. I didn't mean what I said either. I was feeling low. I just lost a job. I took it out on the first person I saw, and that was you. I'm not a Broadway star. I can't even get a job as an actress. I work in a restaurant as a hostess. Not a very good restaurant at that. Okay. I'm just a little dizzy. I haven't felt like eating in the past couple of days. I think you better come home with us and stay for a few days. I couldn't. Well, you can't stay here all alone like this. I mean, we'd be glad to have you. When am I going to see that? Not till I'm all finished. I don't think I want to see it anyway. I must look like something the cat dragged in. Oh, you don't. You look much better today. Well, a couple of days of your grandma's cooking would make anybody feel better. You know, the other day when you brought me those daffodils, it brought back so many memories. I remember being in New York. It was spring. I was broke. I was coming back from an audition. And I knew I'd been terrible. I saw a man selling flowers. And I thought, if I could just have some daffodils, that would bring some small bit of beauty into my life. But I didn't have the 50 cents to buy them. If I'd just come home, I wouldn't have had to long for things like that. They were right here for the taking. Well, then why didn't you come home? I was too ashamed. I didn't want anybody to know the truth. I never had a lead on Broadway. All I ever got was small parts in Shakespeare, and I didn't pay very much. The only time I was a leading lady was in some from his stock company. You know, my parents, well, they wanted me to come home, settle down, and get married. But I stayed on and kept trying. I was too stubborn to ask them for help. When they finally realized that I, I wasn't going to give up, you know, they started making up stories about how successful I was. How come? Well, they couldn't accept the fact that I was a failure. And I kept hoping. 
Nothing ever happened, though. <laughs> I remember one winter, I lived in an unfurnished apartment. There was no heat or hot water. <laughs> I slept in a sleeping bag on the floor, and I cooked in an ice cube tray out of the refrigerator. <laughs> it sounds like fun, I suppose, but, well, it was for a while. Oh, it was cold. You have no idea how cold it was. The worst thing, though, was being afraid that somebody would find out that I was a failure. Didn't you miss your mom and dad? Oh. Yes. When my mother died a few weeks ago, I felt... Well, we never got to know each other. Why did you do something else if you didn't like the job you got? Oh, Addie, it's so easy to lose sight of your goal, you know. You go off to be an artist and you get caught up in the struggle and... Uh, itself, it's... Uh, just surviving becomes the goal. It's hard to think about truth and beauty when there's... no food on the table. That's when your dreams slip through your fingers. When I came home, I guess it hit me all at once, you know. My family gone, 20 years of my life with nothing to show for it. Uh, that's what set off the drinking spree, I suppose. No, I, f I felt that uh, everything was finished. I felt... I was... Nothing. I don't think you're nothing. I think you're one of the most terrific people I ever met. The other day when you acted for us, I never saw anyone do anything like that before. It gave me chills. I thought, if I could ever make anyone feel like that with one of my paintings, then I'd really be an artist. I think you're beautiful. <laughs> church tomorrow. My good blue dress. Same as last year. Oh, yeah, I like that one. We'll both be blue. Dad, what are you wearing? I'm blue, too. I only got one good summer suit, and it's blue. If I can never get up in my room to get it. Oh, Dad, it's only been a few days. Mm. There. Grandma, how's this? That's good. Looks just like her. Yeah, not bad. May I see? You're up. What do you think? Hey, that's really very good. Thanks. Nice to see you feeling better. You look great. I think I'm rested and well fed for the first time in weeks. Well, now you want to take it easy. You don't want to overdo it. Come over, sit down here and have some coffee. I'll get it, Grandma. All right. I don't know how to thank you for everything you've done. A little enough to do, friend of the family. I better start thinking about getting back to New York. I wish you wouldn't go. Why don't you stay on in Clear River for a while? Why would she want to stay here? She likes it here. I know New York. I know the people. I guess it's where my life is. Well, you know people right here, too, in Clear River. And you've got a house here, after all. I think Addie's right. You should think of staying on. Have some peace and quiet. Get rested up. I wish you'd stay here and teach dramatics. We could use somebody artistic around here. You and your wild ideas. I think it's a fine idea. Young folks love to have somebody like Constance help them. I think it's a little late in life for me to start something like that. Grandma says you're never too old to change. Why, she was 62 when she started a new life. It's lucky for me she didn't think it was too late. There's no telling where it'd be now. Well, it's a lovely daydream, Eddie. Well, at least you'll be here tomorrow, won't you? And you can come to the Easter church service with us. I don't think so. Please? I've got nothing to wear. What about that nice dress you wore over here to dinner the other night? I mean, uh, it looked pretty good to me. 
Well, thank you, James. That's very nice of you to say so. But I doubt if I can show my face around town now. Oh. You shouldn't give a fig what folks think, Constance. My goodness. You did your best. Well, it didn't work out one of it. You tried. That's what's important. Besides, this is your home. Constance went to church with us that Easter Sunday. But by the time the service was over, I was sorry I had asked her. No one made a move to talk to her. They just stared and whispered. It must have been very difficult for her, but she was too good an actress to let anybody know. I kept hoping that someone would realize how painful it was for her, come over and say hello, but no one did. It looked like another one of my brilliant ideas just wasn't going to work out. Constance never did go back to New York. She stayed on in Clear River. Grandma had been right about everybody having a chance to start a new life. But it wasn't easy for Constance. She never did exactly fit in. That's what made her a special person. She did what was right for her, and she didn't care what anybody thought. Once the town calmed down about her being there, she began teaching drama and piano to the children. Going to her classes became one of the high points of our lives. She enriched those years for us. And somehow, I think we enriched her life, too. I finally did go to New York to work as an artist. And when things were difficult, I would remember what Constance had said about not letting your dreams slip through your fingers. I held on to my dreams. And I was never afraid to go back to Clear River.